This tutorial is part of my course on Udemy. Check out the description for more info. Hey there, in this lecture we'll be learning about game maker language. That's how we're gonna code our game going forward. So we are gonna go into our project. Here we have the object that we created in the previous lecture. In the object we added some events. So we have create, step and draw. So now we are gonna add some code in the events and basically learn how to code. So first of all, we'll be learning about functions. When you think of coding, you think about giving commands to the computer. So that's what a function is. It basically gives a command to the computer to do something. And here are a few examples. You can tell it to destroy an instance. You can tell it to draw a sprite. You can also tell it to go to another room and so on. So these are examples of what you can do with functions and a game is basically built around using functions. So we are now gonna test out our first example which is about destroying an instance. For that we are gonna add a new event. So I'll go on the mouse and select left pressed. This event will run when I click on this instance. So when we click on this instance, we want it to be destroyed. And when an instance is destroyed, it's removed from the room. So we are gonna do that with a specific function. That function is called instance destroy. So I'm gonna type the function name here. Now to actually call the function, we need these parentheses at the end. So that's how you call or run a function. Now this is a statement and in the statement we are calling a function. Now to tell the compiler that the statement has ended, you can add a semicolon at the end. Semicolons are required in many languages but they are optional in GameMaker. We are still gonna be using them in this course. Now we are gonna run the game and test it out. First of all you will notice that the room is empty. Now if you open the room, you'll see that the instances are still there. But for some reason, they are not appearing in the game. Now there is a reason why this is happening. If you go into the object, we have a draw event here. And right now, this draw event is empty. There's nothing inside it. So that's why the instances are not being drawn. Now you can either delete this event or draw something inside it. So we are gonna do the latter. We are gonna draw something inside it. We are simply gonna draw the instance itself. So there's a function for that. It's called draw self. So I'll write the function name here and then add the parentheses. And now the instance should be drawn. So we are gonna run the game and now we see the instances. Now we are gonna close it again and go back into our object. If you remember, the other solution was to delete the event. So that is what we are gonna do now. I'm gonna right click on the draw event and here delete it. So if there simply is no draw event, then the instances will still be drawn. And we can go into the game and see that the instances are still drawn. So the lesson here is that you don't wanna have an empty draw event. Now here we have a mouse event with instance destroy inside it. So we are gonna go into the game and test it out. Now when I click on an instance, it simply gets removed. So that's simply what a function is. It simply performs an action. Now we are gonna learn about function arguments. Here we have the parentheses after the function. Now inside these parentheses, you can write some values if required by the function. So those values that you write here are called arguments. So we are gonna use a function that requires some arguments. We are gonna do that in the draw event. So I'll go ahead and add it again. First of all, we are gonna call the draw self function. So the instance will be drawn here. As you can see, this function doesn't require any arguments. But now we are gonna use a function that does require arguments. We are gonna call the draw sprite function. Using this function, you can basically draw a sprite. 
so this function does require some arguments and we already have an error here because we haven't written any arguments now the arguments can be seen down here so we have the function name the parentheses and inside them the arguments so the arguments are sprite subimage x and y so now we need to create a new sprite to pass into this function I'm gonna go to the sprites folder and create a new one. This will simply be sprite1. Then I'm gonna go here and click on edit image. I'll quickly draw a circle. Now back in the sprite, I'm gonna set the origin to middle center. And now we'll go back to our object. We are now gonna draw our newly created sprite with this function. So we are gonna fill in the arguments. First, I'll make the window smaller so we can see the arguments easily. Now the first argument here is the sprite. So inside the parentheses, I'm gonna enter sprite1. And this is our first argument. Now we are gonna add a comma to move on to our second argument. And the second argument here is the sub image. This is the frame that we wanna draw. We are not drawing an animation, so I'm simply gonna enter 0. Now for our third and fourth arguments, we have x and y. This is simply the position where the sprite will be drawn inside the room. And these are two dimensional coordinates. x is the horizontal coordinate. And y is the vertical coordinate. And this is how we know where something is inside the room. So we want the sprite to be drawn exactly where the instance is. And we can do that by simply entering x and y for the arguments. So now the image will be drawn exactly where the instance is. We can test it by running the game. And now you see a red circle on each instance. Now the draw self function here is what draws the instance itself. And then this draw sprite function is what draws the red circle on the top. So this is essentially what functions do. And now we are gonna learn about variables. We'll be learning about them in the next lecture. Thanks a lot for watching. If you're interested in the course, check out the description. Make sure you subscribe for more tutorials and I'll see you in the next one.